The Charlotte Folk Society celebrated our 40th anniversary in 2022, and we're still going strong. When our Folk Society came together in 1982, a traditional and folk music revival was happening in communities around the world. But many still felt as though folk music was a thing of the past and had little relevance to modern life or current music trends. Welcome to the International Tosca Music Party. How's everyone? The Charlotte community of 2022 and beyond is growing more diverse every day due to a steady influx of people from many different countries and cultures. Those of you who are ready to engage in this vibrant and diverse community will find traditional music as a perfect avenue to broaden your perspective and get to know folks of all ages and musical traditions. Music has always been the universal language to bridge the gap between different cultures. Every one of our monthly Folk Society gatherings includes an informal jam where veteran and novice players, listeners, and singers all share tunes, songs, and stories. And in that sharing endeavor, they learn how much more they have in common despite differences in cultural heritage. In Looking Back, we interviewed four key individuals responsible for igniting the fire of traditional music in the Charlotte region. Wayne Erbson, Doug Orr, Fiona Ritchie, and Jim McGill. Their collective efforts provided the catalyst for the founding of the Charlotte Folk Society by Marilyn Price. Wayne Erbson was the tour de force as a teacher of traditional instruments at Central Piedmont Community College back in 1972. His multi-instrumental mastery and passion for Appalachian musical heritage provided just the spark Marilyn Price needed. Wayne Erbson came to Central Piedmont Community College where I was going as I was kind of picking up some music theory and things that I hadn't learned from individual piano lessons and I was going there and I met him. He had a uh, class on old time music and I signed up for that class. When I went in that class and I found that, uh, that my rhythm guitar playing all the chords, I could hear the music changes in the old time music tunes. I just kind of automatically knew where to go. You know, Marilyn was really interested in Southern music and culture, but I think I gave her the tools and, and the, the education to really take it further and to deepen her interest and knowledge of all those things. By the time Wayne was moving to Asheville in 1974, Marilyn had already started a jam class at CPCC and organized public concerts on campus. The popularity of Marilyn's jam class over the years gave her the confidence to form the Charlotte Folk Music Society in 1982. In fact, her jam class was where she met Doug Orr, Vice Chancellor at UNCC, and Fiona Ritchie, a recent Scottish immigrant and Celtic music lover. Doug helped establish the NPR station WFAE at the UNCC campus around 1981. Initially, WFE was folk, jazz, classical, and news. That doesn't happen anymore in public radio. I miss it. But most stations now specialize. They're all news, they're all classical, or this or that. But we were a little bit of everything. Late Night Blues, Tom Hanch's American Almanac, Fiona Sisland Shamrock. Fiona Ritchie started the award-winning Thistle and Shamrock radio show, Celtic Music Traditions, Past and Present which has also just celebrated its 40th anniversary and is now internationally syndicated. Music helps us to see, especially acoustic traditional music um, of the heart, helps us to understand the things we have in common and helps us to realize that we have way more in common than the things that divide us. Once Doug became president of Warren Wilson College in 1991, Jim McGill was hired to design and direct the Swannanoa Gathering Folk Arts Workshops in Swannanoa, North Carolina. 
As an award-winning songwriter and instrumentalist and concert organizer with a lifelong passion for regional Appalachian and Celtic music traditions, Jim was a perfect fit as the founding director of Swannanoa Gathering Summer Workshops. Celebrating its 30th anniversary in 2022, these summer workshops preserve, promote, and pass on music and arts traditions handed down through countless generations. Ever since the workshops began, the Charlotte Folk Society has partnered with the Swannanoa Gathering in providing youth and adult scholarships. What we're trying to locate and encourage are the next generation that will carry forward the traditions. You know, not just kids that are interested in playing, but kids who have the talent to become tradition bearers themselves. You know, we've had some people come as youth scholars who are now touring professionals. The very nature of traditional music that is handed down over the last couple of centuries gives the melodies and lyrics a depth of humanity from the daily struggle to survive and shape a better world for their next generation. Traditional music has informed classical as well as more modern music genres, including jazz, blues, country, and gospel, to name a few. Composers and songwriters steeped in traditional music have a much better feel for melody and lyrics. Traditional music continues to evolve as the offspring of many folk musicians from the 80s and beyond continue to honor material handed down as well as create new songs and tunes. Jim's son, Andrew Finn McGill, and Wayne's daughter, Annie Erbson, are a good example of how traditional music continues to flourish. Andrew Finn McGill has been featured on PBS, NPR, TEDx, and MTVU. Finn is a Fulbright Fellow, North Carolina Arts Council Fellow, and South Arts Emerging Traditional Artist. He has studied in the traditional music of Malawi in East Africa, Brazilian jazz, as well as excelling in old-time bluegrass and Celtic fiddling styles, thanks to numerous fiddle teachers at the Swannanoa Gathering. I've been a professional musician for 15, 20 years. I've been a full-time professional musician for the last seven years. And uh, it's all because I had a great community of people to play with when I was a kid. So when it comes to communities, I can't think of a better example of that than the Charlotte Folk Society which is a particular folk music community that I have a long-standing relationship with. Annie Erbson is a lifelong multi-instrumentalist in several styles of music. She's also an artist and cooking instructor. Born and raised in the mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, and following in the family tradition, after taking a detour to become a medical physicist, Annie plays guitar, fiddle, banjo, and bass in a number of bands around the Southeast. And she teaches cooking classes with her mom at the John C. Campbell Folk School. Annie and her parents together run Native Ground Books and Music, a small publishing company focused on traditional American music, cooking, and folklore. She's the go-to trad jazz guitar player in Asheville, where she lives. The reason that she's the she gets all the gigs is because all the you know there's a big trad jazz uh, scene in Asheville. There's hundreds of players, and uh, but she gets most of the gigs because she hits it hard. Amongst several Charlotte Folk Society board members and volunteers, past and present we can point to numerous offspring who are performing, writing songs, teaching, and mentoring the next generation towards musical careers. We look forward to meeting you at our next monthly concert. College students get free admission to our concerts when you show your college ID at the check-in table. There's always an informal jam or two in the hour just prior to when our concert starts. So if you're up for some picking, then bring your instrument. Our annual Youth Showcase happens every January, so if you're interested in signing up for that, check our website at folksociety.org.
Thanks to folks like Wayne, Jim, Marilyn, Doug, and Fiona, such musical activities will continue to help us engage with our local community. I think one of the beauties of the Swan and Gathering and each of the theme weeks, and it certainly is true of old time music, is that whatever your background, whatever your level of skill, uh, you're invited to the table. Connecting with the people I met through the Charlotte Folk Society at the, from the very, very first days, I found that like a feeling of belonging, comfort, welcome, and it was really important to me. It made me feel at home. I don't think folk music is really going anywhere. I think it's, um, it's going to be with us for quite some time because you know, there's a reason that people still sing songs that are 300 years old. I mean, not only are they beautiful, but, you know, they speak to some universal feelings and truths. Play music with your friends, with your family, with yourself. You don't need an electronic device to entertain yourself. You just need a banjo, fiddle, guitar, mandolin, or something, or, or any instrument, really. This is the music that America comes home to. Come see for yourself how traditional music continues to inspire and enliven our communities. Help us work together towards a more sustainable and compassionate world.